Okay. So we're going to look at the word problems on your review packet. What number are they? 21 and 22. 21 and 22. Okay. So there was actually like a whole lesson on the word problems, but I didn't do that. One, because if I sent that, if I had y'all do that in an assignment, it would take us like four days to do word problems, and I ain't got time for that. So there are a couple on your test of which you will have to do one. Okay? But I think it'll help if we go through these, and then um, so you'll it'll help you be able to set up what you're gonna see on your test, okay? So I'll have it in front of me, so y'all are gonna have to read to me so we can go through, all right? So the first one, and I'm probably gonna stop you so I can kind of write down the information, okay? Kaylee, will you periodically kind of check that and make sure that I'm writing in the view, okay? All right, so the first one says, read it, like start reading it to me, Abigail, please. The width of the rectangle is four or less than more than half the length. Okay, so I've got the length and I've got the width, right? And it says the length is four less than the width, right? Okay, so when it says the length is four less than the width, then that means I need to start with the width, okay? Because I always have to figure, the trouble y'all always have is you don't know what you're starting with, right? Okay, so if they're, if they're referring to the length as it relates to the width, then I need to make my width X. Does that make sense? Because everything refers back to the width as your starting point. Okay. Well, I can zoom that in some. Let's see. There we go. Is that better? There we go. Okay. All right. Does that make sense, y'all? All right, so because it, it because the length is related to the width, we're gonna start with the width as X. Everybody good? Okay, so then it says the length is, what's it say, four less than? Okay, so four less than means I've gotta take the width and subtract X, subtract four. Does everybody okay with that? So then my length is X minus four. And that's all it says? It is, says the, the uh, width width oh wait a minute say that again the width of the rectangle is four less than one half of the length okay so i said that wrong okay sorry let me go back the width is four less than one half the length okay sorry then we start with the length because it refers back to the length as your initial i'm sorry i heard i heard you wrong all right so it starts with the length and it says the width is four less than one half of the length. Making sure I'm hearing you right. So if I take half the length and I subtract four, that would give me my width. Is that what it says? Let me make sure I'm hearing you right. The width is four less than one half the length. That's what it says. That's exact word for word what it says. Okay. I'm just making sure, because I don't have it in, on paper in front of me, so when I'm just hearing it, I want to make sure I'm hearing it right. Okay, so if I look at my picture, then I'm going to call this my length and this my width. Y'all need to learn to draw you a picture. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Yes? yes. All right, what else does it say? Okay, so I have my perimeter and wants me to find the area. Okay, so all of this is related to perimeter. What do you know about perimeter? It's the sum of all the sides. It's the sum of all the sides. So how do I write that? So what do I need to do? One half x minus four what, times two. Yeah, times two basically because I have two of those. Okay. Plus two x. Equals 94. That'll give me my perimeter, right? So I have a combined like terms. Well, I've got to, first I've got to, what do I got to do here? I got to distribute that. So two times a half would give me what? One, or just x. And two times negative four would give me negative eight plus two x equals 94. Okay. The rest of this problem you should be able to work out. Right? Okay. Once I have all that, 
then I have X, right? Then you can take X, plug it in, then you'll have a length and a width. You can multiply it together and get the area, right? Is everybody okay with that? Because once you have X, you're not done with this problem. Okay, some of y'all want to stop and think, oh, I'm done, I found X. But that's not what the problem says because then you still have to go back and find the area. So once you find X, you've got to go plug it in and find your length and your width, right? And then multiply your length and your width together to get your area. Is everybody okay with that? Like that's what you have to do to solve that problem. You can't stop when you find X. Is everybody okay with this particular problem? So that was number what? 21. 21. Okay, so y'all are good with that problem because you can work that in, on your own time. Okay, all right, so that takes care of 21. All right. All right, the other word problem. Because I'm pretty positive on your test, there's one that's like this other word problem. All right, read me the other word problem. Go ahead, Abigail. Um, find three consecutive odd numbers, such as the sum of five times the smaller number and twice the larger number, is 33 more than six times the number. Okay. All right, so it sounds super difficult. It's not as difficult as it sounds. Okay. So these types of problems show up a lot. In fact, um, if you've taken TSI, I've seen a, a question like this on the TSI test um, that are similar. It's not the exact same question, but these types of questions come up a lot. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw one like this on your SAT this year. So I want you to understand how to set a question like this up. It's really common, okay? All right, this particular question is consecutive odd. Sometimes they'll say consecutive even. Sometimes it'll just say consecutive numbers or consecutive integers. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right? Okay, so the, the, the biggest issue that you have is knowing where to start. Okay? I don't know much of anything about the numbers. So they're all unknowns, right? So the first one I'm going to start with is X. Okay? So my first... My first number is X. Everybody okay with that? If they were just consecutive numbers, so if I, could, if I thought about this, if your first number was 1, okay, then the next, to get to the next number, to get from 1 to 2, I would just add 1, right? So then my next number would be X plus 1. And then my third number, so you go out like this, to get from 1 to 2, you would say 1 plus one would give me two, right? And then to get to the third number, it would be plus two would get me to three, right? And then that would get me to four. Does that make sense? Okay, but we don't know what the numbers are. We don't know if it's one. So we have to start with X. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so then my second number, I don't know what it is either, do I? Okay, but they didn't say they're consecutive. They're consecutive odd numbers, right? So I can't say X plus one. So if I, so again, if I'm gonna pretend my number was one, the next number, if it's odd, would not be two, it would be what? Three, so how would I get from one to three? What would I have to add? Two, so my second number is X plus two. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? Okay, so then my third number is gonna be X plus Think about this one, this is one, this number would be three, this number would have to be five. So I have to add how many? Four. And if I was going to the next one, I would be adding six, and then I would add eight, and then I would add 10, or whatever, because they're consecutive odds. Does that make sense? Because I'm skipping one every time. If they were just consecutives, I would do one, two, three, four, whatever. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's my three things. Those are my first, second, third, okay? It doesn't matter what it, because I don't know what they are yet, but I've got my first, second, third. That's that part. That's the first thing you have to do, is you have to tackle this, okay? If they were consecutive, it'd be X, X plus one, X plus two, okay? If they were evens, so then this one would be, so let's say it was consecutive even numbers. Okay, and your first one was say two, then this would s still be similar. So if we had two, then the next one would be four, right? So then you would still 
add two, wouldn't you? Because two plus two would be four. And then to get to the next number would be six, so then we'd still have to add four, right? So this would work the same, right? Because you're having to skip one. Does that make sense? So if you're having to skip one, this is gonna be the same. If you're not skipping one, then it's one, two, three. Is everybody okay with how that works? Okay, now we can get into all of this, what's happening to how you combine the numbers, okay? All right, Abigail, give me the first thing that it says. Because it says the sum of something, which means we gotta add some of these together. Such as the sum of five times the smaller number. Okay, so my smaller number has to be the first one, right? All right, so I've got five times my smaller, five X, okay? Um, twice the larger number. Okay, and I'm, it says the sum of those two, right? Oh, yeah. The sum of, so I've got to add these two, right? And that what it says? I'm adding five times the smaller and what? Um, and twice the larger number. Okay, how do I do twice this whole thing? But if I just do two times X plus four, then I only am multiplying two times X. So if I want to do twice the whole thing, I got to put a parentheses around it. So two times the whole thing. Remember, if it says, because this thing represents a whole number, right? So this is the number, just like this is a number. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Like this represents a number. This represents a number, so I have to think of this as a, as a whole thing together. Does that make sense? Okay, so this, so this is what it says. And then is 33 more than 6 times the original number? Okay. Is? Equal. Mm -hmm. 33 more? More than 6 times the median number. Okay, the median's the one in the middle, right? This is your median. Sometimes they use those terms that you should know. Median means middle. Okay, six times, it's 33 more. That means, what's 33 more? When it says 33 more, what does that mean? I'm going to add, so I need to add 33. And I'm adding it to what, Abigail? Um, six times the middle number. Six times my middle number. So six times this whole thing. Kaylee, is that all on there? Okay, six times that whole thing. Okay, so let's go back and I'm so let's go back and read. It says five times the smaller number, or the sum of five times the smaller number, and two times the largest is thirty-three more than six times the median. That's what that says. Everybody okay with that? Like you you have to break it, you gotta do this part first. Like you have to. You've got to get this lined out. Then you can go back and put this together. You have to remember to treat this as a whole number. Because if you just do 2x plus 2 and 6x plus 4, you're going to mess that up because your numbers aren't going to come right. It's not going to come out right. Then you work this like we've been working an equation. Then once you find x, then you've got to go back and do find this number is x, this number is x plus 2, and this number is x plus 4, and you'll have your numbers. Everybody okay with that? So you should be able to go work this problem now. But I, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive there is one of these on your test, and you should be able to work that problem. Like, you should absolutely be able to work this problem now that we've talked about it. Because if you always start with x and then go from there, if they're consecutive, plus one, plus two. If they're consecutive, odd, or even, then you've got to add two, add four. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, it doesn't matter if they're negative or positive. That makes no difference because you're always starting with X. Everybody okay there? All right, those are the main thing because I know it's on your test and we really didn't cover the word problems in class because I don't wanna spend a significant time, amount of time on that because really it goes back to solving the equations, which is really what we gotta be able to do. Because the, the word problems, like you can get there. Yeah, you just have to really, you just have to read and we have to think about how to set it up. 
we always start with that. Just like in the um, the previous problem with the rectangle, we had to with the length. We had to start with whatever it refers to with x. So wherever you're starting, a lot of times they have those problems about Susie and Peggy and whatever in their ages, and they're like so and so is you know, four years older than this one, and this one is three times their age. You've got to go back and look at who whose age is your starting point. That's your X, and then everybody else goes from that age. Does that make sense? That's your X. That's your starting point. And if you find out who your starting point is, that's your X, and everybody else ties back to them. That's how you work those problems. Everybody good?